Now, how do you get a clean heart? Loved ones, it is not by psychology. And it is not by reading those Improve Yourself books. An unclean heart is something that only God can deal with. No man can deal with it. And all you're doing with those books is putting cosmetics on an old barn that doesn't look too good and trying to make it look better. Unless you go to the heart of the problem, you'll never be delivered from that unclean heart. How do you get a clean heart? Well, you'll find it, loved ones, it's gloriously simple. It's Acts 15 and 9. And Peter is explaining what happened at the house of Cornelius. Maybe you'd look at verse 8 too. Acts 15 and 8. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, but cleansed their hearts by faith. That's how. You get your heart cleansed by the Holy Spirit through your faith. That's it. It's not a long, long series of trying to train yourself. It's not years and years of trying to reroute the thoughts and feelings of your heart. It's not years and years of psychoanalysis trying to track back where you got these wrong feelings or these bad feelings. It's not trying to get a group who will treat you nice and will treat you right. It's not that, loved ones. It's what the Bible says. You get your heart cleansed by faith through the Holy Spirit. Faith is belief plus obedience. When you were born of God, when the Holy Spirit acted upon you and made you aware of Jesus and made you aware of God and of the realities of heaven, you know what you did. Obedience for you was repentance. It was turning from the things that were wrong in your life. It was stopping them, stopping them there. And then it was believing that Jesus had died for you and God was willing to forgive you. Now, it's exactly the same for a cleansed heart. It's faith, belief plus obedience, except that the obedience in this situation is consecration, not repentance, not turning away from the things that are wrong, but giving everything of your life to God, consecrating it wholly and absolutely and complete and full surrender right from the top of your head to your feet, right the whole way down to the deepest part of your heart. It's giving it all to God and saying, Lord, I want the Holy Spirit to come in and to rule my heart and to do what he wants. I want him to make his wishes my wishes. I want his will to be my will. I don't want to even think a thought or turn an eye where he doesn't want to do it. I want to give myself wholly to you, Holy Spirit. You take over this whole being of mine. And even the thoughts that I think are harmless, if you say I've not to think them, I won't think them. It's full consecration, loved ones. That's such a deep thing. Because you remember what the Bible said in Genesis. It said that the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things. And it is. Your heart, you know, you know the, the garbage that comes out of there. You know the poison that it's capable of. You know how it spews it up, and you wonder what sewer did it get it from. And we kind of like to excuse ourselves, you know. Oh, well, it's what you said, Pastor. It's just something coming in from outside, except we know fine well. This stuff is coming up like a fountain. This isn't stuff that's coming in from outside. This stuff comes up repeatedly in our lives. Loved ones, your heart is so deceitful that it is actually an enemy of God. That's what Romans 8 and 7 says. The, the flesh is enmity against God. It is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. Loved ones, you keep thinking your heart is just a little astray. That's it. That's the error you make. You know, you keep thinking, oh, well, Pastor, it's just a little in the bottom. Loved ones, that's bluff. While it has that little in the bottom, it knows it can spread it throughout the whole life, any time it cares to. 
The heart is deceitfully wicked above all t things. It will continue to deceive you and make you think, put up with me, put up with me. It's only a little bit of wrong. That won't do you any harm. Loved ones, it's poison. The Bible says it's enmity against God. It is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. Wouldn't you testify to that? When you testify that when you lose your temper, you feel there's something insane inside me. I can't control this. I can't control it. It's, so, it's like another person inside me. And that's what God's Word says. It's not subject to God's law. Neither indeed can it 